Okay, welcome to the calibration procedure for uh, Tech 180A. The crystal oscillator is calibrated by zero beating it with WWV. The service manual specifies the instructions pretty clearly. Uh, I thought I'll cover a couple of extra options which you could use today to do the same alignment. Uh, one extra thing which I'm going to show you is uh, 
The service manual specifies the use of an oscilloscope to watch the signal and confirm the zero beat or align the zero beat, but you could actually even use the S meter in the ham receiver to do it. The other option is uh, the service manual specifies to use the one microsecond pulse and then use that as an antenna and then pick the 10th harmonic of the same from the receiver to tune the crystal oscillator. Instead of that, you could actually even use the 10 megahertz sine wave output directly from the 180A. The difference is if you're gonna use the 10 megahertz output, you just need to make sure that the 180A is kind of away from the ham receiver because that signal is quite strong and it can overload the input. Let's get started. But let's first set up the receiver. So first step, I'll use a modern receiver with a digital synthesizer, which I'll tune to WWV 10 megahertz. Now I'm gonna move the receiver to CW mode so that I can listen to the carrier, which is the 10 megahertz carrier frequency. And the next step will be to turn on the 188 Now I'm going to adjust the frequency of the crystal oscillator by varying C105 in 180A and you can see the S meter needle start swinging back and forth as I hit close to the zero beat and you can see the change in the tone as well as the frequency difference goes higher. Let's try the same calibration procedure using a uh, analog receiver from 1937-38. This is a Halicrafters SX16. Uh, I've also attached an oscilloscope so that you can actually see the beat frequency coming down. Plus we have a S meter as well on the receiver. The entire setup remains the same um, and as I'm going to tune C105 in the Tech 180A, you can see the beat frequency going up and down and finally reaching close to null, which is supposed to be the beat frequency or the zero frequency difference between WWV and the Tech 180A.
note here as the difference in the frequencies goes larger the s meter won't show that but you can hear it as a tone plus you can watch it on the oscilloscope since i am doing this calibration while there is an audio subtone present you can see two waveforms on the oscilloscope but if you pick the right minutes in an hour you will get WWV without the audio subtones which will make it much easier for you to calibrate if you are just using oscilloscope since I am using a combination of oscilloscope and the S-meter I can calibrate it irrespective of whether the audio tone is present or not Here the process is exactly the same uh, instead of using the 10 megahertz uh, amplified out i'm going to pick the one microsecond pulses which will have 10 megahertz as the 10th harmonic in it which is tied again back to the one megahertz crystal oscillator now it's, since it's the 10th harmonic the signal strength is going to be pretty weak that's where we are using a cable connected from 180a to an antenna which is a screwdriver what you see on top of the receiver and that is used to induce the signal from the 180A into the receiver and you can see how the zero beating happens on the S meter This is how it looks on an oscilloscope. As you can see, I can generate consecutively closer and closer time mark pulses to verify the horizontal linearity of an oscilloscope. Here is a view from the 7K. The trigger is driven by 180. Okay, I have hooked this to my 547. Uh, the trigger is also driven by the 180A. So do the vertical input. And I can generate different pulses at different time intervals to verify the horizontal calibration. And as you can see here, the 547 is slightly off calibration. And it needs to be recalibrated. And that's the exact purpose of this instrument. Thank you so much for watching.